This is the Catholic Daily Journal for May the 4th, 2019. It's Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. Supposedly, it began when Margaret Thatcher, who became the first female prime minister of the UK today in 1979, was greeted by a supporter who was also a Star Wars fan. Either way, it's a good day to watch episodes 4, 5, 6, 3, or 7, maybe Rogue One, but not 1, 2, 8, or Solo. Of course, Clone Wars and Rebels from Disney are heartily approved, and no service announcement needs to be made about the disastrous Ewok films. On a more serious note, today in 1415, the Council of Constance in the south of modern-day Germany officially condemned John Wycliffe and Jan Hus as heretics. Wycliffe was English and Hus was Czech. Both proposed themselves as reformers in the century prior to the ascent of Martin Luther. It's worth remembering that there was a lot of drama at this time between the bishops of Northern Europe and the princes of the territories in which they lived. The princes were keen to reduce the power, especially the financial power, and also the money that was going to the church rather than to the state. And so many of those princes actively sought out heretical preachers who might be able to undermine the local bishops and perhaps take some of that money going into the church coffers and put it into the state coffers instead. Honest studies of Martin Luther reveal that he was as much a pawn in this game between bishops and princes as he was a pioneer. Both Hus and Wycliffe based their teachings on two key principles. First, they praised poverty and claimed that the church should be poor. Then they argued that the liturgy of the church should be plain and without any real beauty, and certainly without any expensive beauty. They were also adamant that everyone should receive Holy Communion under both species, and that everything should be done in the vernacular, which sounds a bit familiar. The bishops agreed heartily that poor liturgy and communion under both kinds would damage devotion to the Holy Eucharist, and that the vernacular would only encourage bad habits of improvisation among the clergy, which uh, also sounds familiar. Hus and Wycliffe were corrected and instructed to publicly recant their teaching. They refused and were handed over to secular authorities to be executed. Of course, the princes weren't bothered. They just found another local preacher who would call for pedestrian liturgy and a more homogenous church leadership. But today in 1970, the Ohio National Guard was sent to Kent State University after violent protests had plagued the campus and the surrounding city the weekend before. After some back and forth, they opened fire and killed four students and wounded nine others. The students were protesting the Cambodian campaign of the Vietnam War. Things were about to get much worse until a professor, Glenn Frank, stepped in and made an impassioned plea that if the students didn't disperse, more of them will be shot and killed. Photos of the event and of the deceased were published in national newspapers. President Nixon's response was perceived as callous, and the shooting fueled violent protests against the Vietnam War all across the country. A Gallup poll was taken the following week that showed that 58% of Americans blamed the students for escalating the problem, but the press coverage portrayed the youth of the nation as united against this war. For better or worse, Kent State became a rallying cry for all manner of anti-war activity peaceful, violent, and in between. Finally today in 1929, one of my very favorite actresses, Audrey Hepburn, was born on the Flemish side of Brussels in Belgium. She was at the heart of the golden age of Hollywood and was an icon of class and style and beauty. Her career took off with Roman Holiday and everyone knew she was something special when she became Holly Golightly in Breakfast at Tiffany's. After Hollywood, she turned her attention and her wealth to philanthropy and spent her later years working with the UN to assist those in need. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.